Hi, I'm Josh Pennington, and um, we're going to do a tour of Pfeiffer Fish Hatchery. Um, so we're going to spawn some sauger here in a few minutes. Um, we've got <clears throat> a few of those that we can spawn and uh, show you kind of how we do that. Um, so at the hatchery, we, we raise fish. It's uh, aquaculture, and the, um, the definition of aquaculture that I learned in grad school was just simply fish farming. So that's kind of what we do. We're just, we farm fish, we stock all around the state. So we rear um, sauger, sawgai, channel catfish, blue catfish. Um, we do a hybrid of the two catfish. And then we also um, raise uh, red ear sunfish, bluegill, and then we have two restoration species that we culture that are um, lake sturgeon and alligator gar. Um, I guess we can go ahead and we'll spawn these sauger first and I'll kind of just explain what they're doing as they uh, spawn those. So Graham's picking up the females. He's a fisheries biologist at Pfeiffer. He's going to dry the fish off because we don't want any water in the eggs. Um, the water activates the eggs to allow them to be fertilized. So he's going to strip the eggs into the bowl. So the the eggs are stripped into the bowl and then we'll take um, milk from the males and we'll collect that in a syringe. So he's getting the second one here. So we, <clears throat> the eggs, once the water hits them, they're only um, going to be active for about a minute or two before they close up and then they're not going to be able to be fertilized. So that's why we want to keep, keep the water out of the bowl. They get a little squirmy there. And then we'll raise these fish for about 30 days out in the pond once we stock them and stock them at about an inch and a half. So he's, this is Noah, he's a biologist here at Pfeiffer. He's um, collecting milk from the males to fertilize the eggs. And sometimes you get some that's not cooperative. So we've kind of changed up with the social distancing. We used to just do this over the bowl and now we've move to collecting it in a syringe, which has actually worked out better for us. There you can see the milk coming out and he's collecting it. So it's, it doesn't look like much, but these are river fish, so it's pretty concentrated. So if you get a couple good drops, that's about all you need. <clears throat> so he's going to go put that in the bowl and then we'll stir it with a turkey feather. And the reason we use a turkey feather is it's been... Um, it's kind of just been tradition to use a turkey feather. And then we, uh, because it's, and it's soft, so it doesn't hurt the eggs when you're um, stirring them up. So we'll stir those eggs for about two minutes. And then we'll add um, Fuller's Earth into those. And the Fuller's Earth is like a clay um, dirt that, and what that does is, is that will 
coat the eggs so that they don't stick together. We don't want them to stick together because we'll bring them and we'll put them in these jars over here to roll. Now, if they were being spawn, if they were spawning in their natural habitat, they would stick to something and kind of be on a flat layer. But we don't want them to smother each other. Um, so, and then he's, like I said, he's gonna. He's just gently mixing those up so that they can be fertilized. And then we can come over here. So after we get those fertilized and they, we put them in a tray over there, they'll water harden. Then we bring them and we put them in these jars. And you can see here there's some eggs in here and they're rolling. So there's water here going down this tube. And if I pull this up, you can see these little fins on here. These are called shad tubes. And what that does, it allows the water to come down and roll the eggs. So they're just kind of gently rolling in there to keep them aerated. And the, the little white eggs you see are unfertilized eggs. And we just each day we'll pick those out because they can become vectors for bacteria and stuff. But then as they hatch, you can see them over here. There's fry that's already hatched in this tank here. There's about 100,000 fry in that worth. So we'll stock about and we'll get back around 25 to 30,000 of those fish at about an inch and a half. So they're just going out in the ponds for about 30 days and they're eating zooplankton. Um, and then that's kind of what we, what we do with the sauger. Um, it's usually about five, four or five days post hatch that we stock those in the ponds. Um, some of the other fish that I was talking about that we spawn is like the the red ear sunfish and the bluegill, and we just put those, we'll put males and females in the pond and they'll just spawn naturally, and then we'll harvest those ponds and um, get the, the little ones out. The catfish, we do a little bit different. We um, stock a male and a female in a pen, and we have a spawning box in there, and in the spawning box, they'll pair up They'll lay their eggs and then we'll collect the eggs out of the spawning box and bring them in here and hatch them out and feed train the fry in here before we stock those out in the pond. I've got a question. Okay. Um, is the agency still stocking Erie strain walleye or is there been a switch to rock acid and repeat that? Okay, the que there's a question of if we're stocking Erie strain walleye or just the rock castle. So we are, we're actually stocking both. The Erie get stocked at certain areas, and then the, the rock castle or the native walleye that are getting stocked um, in the waters where there was native walleye before. Um, the other hatchery, Minor Clark in Moorhead, actually raises the walleye. You want to tell us one more time why you use turkey feathers? The reason we use the turkey feathers was it's they're soft and it doesn't harm the eggs when you're stirring them up. The, um, and it's kind of just been tradition. There's probably, you could probably get something synthetic and do the same thing with it, but we've kind of just always used turkey feathers and it gives us a good excuse to go turkey hunting. So, so now he's uh, dumping the, um, the fuller's earth off of the eggs to clean them up. And then he's going to dump them in that, that floating screen here. So this, it's just got a mesh bottom in it so that the eggs can't fall out. So we float that in there and um, we'll let the eggs water harden in there and they have to stay in there at least four hours. And they'll water harden and then we'll move them to the jars.
So it's a little bit of a process to get um, to get the fish spawned. Uh, so, okay. Are you stocking flathead catfish in Cedar Creek? Um, I found five inch flatheads last year floating around. Um, the question was, are we stocking flathead catfish in Cedar Creek? Um, no, we're not stocking any flathead catfish um, right now. Just yeah, they've just, yeah, it'd be natural recruitment. This is the, the float tray. So those eggs will just float in there for at least four hours and then we'll, um, we'll move them to the jar. And what we do, we'll just take a siphon hose and siphon them into the jars over here. And then we'll put them over here on the rack so that they can hatch. So we can... Um, we can go out to and feed a catfish pond. So we can uh, walk out to the um, pond. So the catfish, that's what we raise the most of, is, um, is catfish. We raise, um, like I said, the channel catfish, the blue catfish, and then we raise a hybrid catfish. The hybrid catfish, we... Um, we raise for our FINS program, the Fishing in Neighborhoods. So there's 44 lakes across the state and they're in like urban areas to give people more uh, fishing access. What are they a hybrid of? It's a hybrid of a uh, channel catfish um, female with a blue catfish male. And we just pair those up and they'll spawn. We get about 50% of the pairs that we pair up will spawn. Um, and then so we, like I said, we rear those out in the ponds. We bring the eggs in, we hatch the eggs, and then feed train them for about 10 days. And then we'll take them back out and stock them in the ponds um, for grow out. And then we'll harvest those fish, and then we'll restock them into our ponds at a lower density to get the bigger fish, because we're raising about a one pound um, catfish for um, our fins program. So <clears throat> there's a paddle wheel aerator running there. So we have to check oxygen in the ponds twice a day um, and then decide whether we're gonna run the aerators or not. Um, we've, so we have 48 ponds that range from a half acre to four acres. And we can rear about up to about 10,000 pounds of catfish per acre. Um, and then, so we can put about 10,000 um, of the fish that we're rearing for uh, fins in a pond and get them up to size. These, uh, these, this is an, a one acre pond. Most of them are one acre. And then we'll go out here and feed. This is a catfish pond and these these fish are uh, are to the size that they're ready to go so we're feeding those when it's their prime prime feeding and they're in their prime temperature range we can feed up to 100 pounds an acre per day So the question was, is why do we mostly raise catfish? And I mean, that's just what our, we have a production meeting every year and we have a list of what we need to raise um, based on what our biologists recommend. So we, um, that's what we've been asked to raise right now. There's a lot of people that fish for catfish. 
So, so he's going to, it's probably going to get loud, but he's going to start that and we'll watch these fish feed. There's about 10,000 uh, fish in this pond. So it's a uh, it's a prepared diet. It's 32% um, protein, 7% fat. It's um, made for fish. It's a complete diet. It's a cargill um, fish food. We um, we used to feed um, Perina. Just depends on. Go for it. That was about 50 pounds of food. Next question is, uh, what about walleye? You know, like... I'm not sure. I'm, I'd have to look at the list to see what the walleye um, production was. Okay. Well, we don't we don't raise the walleye here. So these get. Um, these are about 22 months old, and they'll be about right at about a pound each, roughly, maybe a little bit bigger than a pound. Um, these are, this is a pond of hybrid catfish. How many fish does Pico produce each year? We produce, oh, <clears throat> the question was, is uh, how many fish do we um, produce each year at Pfeiffer? We produce um, around 180,000 pounds of fish, and those um, numbers, we raise about 70, 80,000 um, stalker size catfish, so that's like an eight to 10 inch fish, about 130,000 um, of the fins fish, that's about one pound fish, uh, we produce Around 100,000 sauger. Um, we've been doing, been producing about 150,000 saw guy, uh, and then bluegill. I think we're just we're not doing very many of those. We're doing about 10,000 um, now, and those are being grown out for fins fish. So those will be trying to get those to five to six inches to stock out into the fins lakes. Um, and then produce produce about six thousand um, lake sturgeon, and we do all those indoors. Um, and then the and the alligator gar, we do about five or six thousand, depending on the year. Uh, but in I started here in two thousand seven, and we were shipping out about. 57, 57, 58,000 pounds of fish, and a couple years ago we shipped out 220,000 pounds. Um, but we've got it now, we're about right around 180,000 pounds a year. Are the ponds lined for easy to pull when you harvest them? Uh, most of our ponds are not lined, they're earthen ponds. The only ones that we have that are lined is. Um, We've got some of our newer ponds over there, and the reason that they're lined is more for the um, the soil type 
that's down there so that they don't leak. All right, thank you all for joining us on a tour of Pfeiffer Fish Hatchery.